the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello my dear children, how are you all? Welcome back to class 8, lesson 14, part 1, the church is universal. Before we start the lesson, let us all rise for a short prayer, join our hands and close our eyes. Almighty Father, we praise you, we give you thanks, we glorify your name. Lord Jesus be with us today. Guide us through this lesson, Holy Spirit. Help us to learn more about the church. Mother Mary, pray for us to your Son Jesus Christ. We make this prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The church is universal. What do you mean by universal? Something which is present everywhere in the entire universe, correct? So let us start this lesson with a small passage from the Bible, Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 13, verses 31 and 32, the parable of the mustard seed. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. So how many of you have seen mustard seed? It is a very tiny seed, is it not? If you have not seen, you can just ask your mother. It is there in all of your kitchen. So you can just take it in your hand. It can barely fit in between your two fingers. You can just, just can't hold it because it is so tiny. But when you sow that seed, it grows to be a big shrub and then eventually a tree. Now, I am sure we all have studied about the advantages of a tree. Can we tell some of the advantages? So, a tree gives shelter to other living beings, is it not? It gives shelter to the birds, they make their nest on the tree, it gives shelter to other small animals, insects, human beings. It gives shade. People who are tired walking long distances and whenever they say they see a tree, they immediately go and stand in the shade of that tree and it gives them some kind of relaxation and peace of mind. You see different kinds of birds making their nest on the tree, laying eggs and bringing their small chicks up. You have squirrels, other insects, spiders living on the tree. And most importantly, the tree gives us something which is very necessary for life on earth. Can anyone tell me what it is? Oxygen, is it not? So the tree gives us oxygen which is very essential for all the living being on the earth. The tree also gives food to the small tiny microorganisms under the soil. We have all studied the process of photosynthesis in which the tree converts light energy to chemical energy. 
it converts the light from the sun falling on the leaves to sugar and starch and gives it as food to the microorganisms that are living in the soil. It takes in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and releases oxygen. So you see the tree in fact support life on this earth and we know this is the creation of God Almighty and we can compare our church to the tree just as a tree gives life to other living beings on this earth the church is also a means of life it is also a means of shelter to other living beings and also a means of getting nutrition and food for their survival. So we say the church is universal. The Catholic Church, the word Catholic is derived from the word Catholicos, it's a Greek word. And when we see the meaning of the word Catholicos in Greek, it means open to all or embracing all. So that's what a tree does, right? It is open to all and also embraces all other living beings. So it gives its shade, it gives places on itself for other living beings to make homes, it gives fruits and food to other living creatures. It doesn't take anything for itself, is it not? The church is also similar to a tree. It also tries to embrace all the living beings, all humans on this earth. It is open to all the people on this earth and that is what Lord Jesus wants us to know through the parable of the mustard seed. Now why we call the church is universal because Jesus promised the salvation not to just a group of people but to the entire humanity, to the entire world. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the whole humanity, not for some few people, but the whole humanity. So the salvation is a promise to every living being on this earth. And so we call the church as universal. In the Old Testament, we see that Abraham was called to be the father of nations. And it was not just like that, that he was called the father of nations. God really wanted all the human being on this earth to know his love and to know the good news that Jesus Christ had brought on this earth. The good news of salvation, the good news of love of God for his people and that proves the universality of the church. The fact that Jesus Christ asked the disciples to go to the ends of the world and proclaim the good news just confirms that he wants the church to be universal, the good news to be spread to every living being. He didn't ask them to stay in their place or in that particular country, but he asked them to go to the entire world, to the ends of the world and preach the good news. So we see the church is everywhere. We experience the presence of church everywhere. And in previous chapters, we also saw that church should be the conscience of the world. 
the conscience which is developed by God, the conscience which enables us, empowers us to choose what is right from what is wrong. And that is why we are asked to be the conscience of the world, so that it can bring salvation to entire humanity. In chapter 8, we also see that Jesus asks us to be the light of the world and salt of the earth. So he does not want us to be the light of the our house or our nation, salt of our family, no. He asks us to be the light of the world and salt of the earth. So it indicates that he wants the church, that means us. Remember I told you who is the church? It is you and me who make the church. And when we say the church is universal, it means that we are supposed to be universal in nature. We are supposed to be open to all and embrace all. So Jesus Christ wants us to proclaim this good news of salvation to the entire humanity through our lives, through our words and our deeds. So let us all take part in this mission that Jesus has entrusted to us to make the church universal and make ourselves open to all different kinds of people on this earth and let us all enable ourselves to embrace all kind of people that we meet in our day to day life. Let us have love for them, let us have compassion, respect for every human being and also every living thing on this earth. Just like how the tree gives shelter, gives food and everything that it has to other living beings on the earth. Let us conclude this class with a small prayer. Let us all rise, join our hands, close our eyes. Lord Almighty, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name. Lord Jesus, help us to be like the mustard seed. Help us to grow into a big tree and give shelter to other living beings. Help our friends and family and people who ate us. Lord Jesus, help us to embrace everyone in our life, just as you embrace the whole humanity. Holy Spirit, strengthen us in our faith and help us to live a life of openness and accepting every human being that we meet in our life. Mother Mary, pray for us to your Son Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.